Hey guys, welcome back to Mod and Pop Thrift. I made the biggest oops, maybe, that I've ever made on eBay. And that's gonna be in this video. I'm gonna show you some ins and outs of a record player so that you can uh, know what you're buying. We're gonna get into some what solds and I'm not going back to thrift stores. And so we're gonna talk about that. Let's get into it. So I did a whole lot of thrifting today. Um, the, you'll see some of the stuff on the background in the table. A lot of books today. Uh, did found a couple of different series, but what I wanted to talk to you about is this record player that I bought. Let me flip the camera around. So this record player was $6.99. And I didn't know whether or not it worked because I'm buying it from Goodwill. So you never know. Turns out I didn't care. Uh, it's dual brand, which isn't the, you know, it's not Marantz, but that's a good quality machine. It had the manual tape to the top and you can see kind of where I pulled the tape off. I don't know if you can see, but you can see, definitely see it here. Anyway, that manual, um, is worth $25 all by itself. And then it has the uncracked dust cover. This is $40 all by itself. Dust covers for these machines. Dust covers for almost any quality record player is worth, they're worth quite a bit. So this is clear. It's not all scratched up. It's not cracked along the back where a lot of them would get cracked. This, this dust cover is worth every bit of the $7 that I paid. It'll be a little bit of a pain in the butt to ship, but it's, uh, it's not bad at all. This is uh, the only real condition issue, is that scratch right there. Let's get into the record player. So how do you know that this isn't just your garden variety piece of crap record player? Well, f we'll start here. It has 45 and 33, but then it has plus and minus. So if you're older than me, you probably already know this. If you're not, you don't. This, uh, if you're on 33 and it sounds like it doesn't, like the record doesn't sound right, this adjustment allows you to speed the record up and slow the record down ever so slightly to calibrate that speed in. And that is an expensive feature on a record player. Start and stop, belt drive, these are not big deals. Um, I mean, you could always comp the model. This uh, made in Germany, generally speaking, uh, German made electronics are very high quality. Uh, back here, you have this counterweight that works with the for the anti-skating. Keep Skating is when, if you put it, the thing on the record and it just kind of moves itself and it causes a skipping issue sometimes, but a lot of times you, when you buy these vintage record players, the record, the needle, you put it on and it'll just run across the whole record. That's this, if you know what to do, you can calibrate this weight back here and this here and make this, make it balance right. Um, and there's a lot of YouTube videos. So if you find a record player that isn't pushing hard enough or it's pushing way too hard, then this is the solution on a quality record player. It wouldn't be the case on a cheapo, but there wouldn't be much adjustment there. But if this has real anti-skate adjustment, which means there's something here, sometimes this is a screw. Uh, like you'd have to get a screwdriver and turn it, but it would still have some kind of dial. And then on the end of the tone arm, there's a weight that you can mess with. And see, you can imagine how that counterweight, how much that much movement in the counterweight makes a difference on how much pressure the needle head puts on the record. So if you're looking at a record player and it has real anti-skate adjustment, it has uh, pitch vault adjustments, then those are signs of a quality record player. This is another sign of a quality record player. It doesn't, like, you can remove, and I've never seen one that's quite like this, but you can remove the uh, stylus. And so if this is changeable like this, that whole cartridge head, um, 
then that means that it's that this is a pretty quality unit. A lot of times that the the way you remove it will be by removing this whole thing, but on this one it's just a real unique uh, setup. So I bought this for six ninety nine. And if it worked, that would have been fantastic. This is a $200 record player. But I got the dust cover that's worth $30 or $40. I got the manual that's worth $30 or $40. And this stylus, I'll be able to, I'll be able to mess with this enough to make, to make sure this stylus is in good shape. And it appears to be. Uh, but this stylus is worth like $40 all by itself too. So it's a little diamond needle. And you can see if you... Let me see if I can... Nah, I'm not going to be able to do it one-handed. I don't want to break anything. There we go. So this is a replaceable part and has a part number, right? And that's the actual diamond needle part. And this is, so this is the stylus and this is the cartridge together put on here. They're called the head. Um, and so I will probably put these two together and sell them for 40 bucks. Um, so just because if you're buying a record player as cheap as $7 and it hits some of these marks, you're going to make money. The manual is kind of a, an oddball out. You don't see that very often. So I just wanted to give you an idea. If you're finding, if you find a record player and you're like, man, I don't know enough about record players to make sure that this thing works properly and how do I know that this isn't just some Sears piece of crap? Um, obviously, you can look up the model number, but if you're not, you know, if you're at some estate sale and the lady that lives there is looking over your shoulder and you don't want to comp the thing, there are there are ways to identify a quality record player. And the pitch and the skating um, and a removable head, the dust cover, paperwork, really good things if you're not uh, getting in too deep on a record player those kind of things can make you some real money so even if this worked and I'll be done with this even if this thing worked I would sell the paperwork separately and that's my money back no matter what the record player sells for all right I think that's going to be it on the record player thing so that was a little bit clickbaity of me to say. I have decided to not go to any thrift stores for two weeks. Uh, I just have so much inventory and I keep going and buying 15 items and I list one of them and then put 14 items into the death pile and I feel like I'm never going to get anywhere. And with spring coming up, I probably have a thousand items to list that... Uh, if I just continue to pile on top of them, I'm never going to get to all this stuff. So I've decided that I'm going to take two weeks and I'm going to list at least 25 items a day for two weeks, which won't get me through it all. But I did list 40 uh, on Sunday uh, and now I'm and I listed 25 yesterday and I'm going to like 16 today. But let's do a uh, let's do some what solds. All right, so I retail arbitrage these uh, underwear a couple, it's probably been two or three months ago, and they didn't sell and they didn't sell, and now all of a sudden they're selling. There's a, So this is the third pack that I've sold recently for $11.99. I paid $2 at Walmart. Uh, not I had them listed at $14.99, and, so, and then I ran a 20% off sale, and those got caught with that sale, and so that's probably why they're selling, and... So I'm not making a ton of money because they're costing me, they're costing five bucks to ship. Anyway, it is what it is. Uh, I'd rather them sell than sit, even if I'm only making a very little bit of money. This uh, Kermit, I picked up for a dollar the other day, sold for $17.99 free shipping, and he went first class because I just stuck, it's a plush, so I just stuck it in a poly mailer, and it was uh, 12 ounces. This, uh, True Religion. A lot of people talk about True Religion being a really good bolo. I don't find much of it, so I don't. I'm not real familiar with it. But this shirt was two twenty two at Goodwill the other day, and it sold for nine dollars and eighty cents plus shipping. Uh, these were part of a big load. I got a new big load. I got of stuff that somebody was 
going to donate to a thrift store and gave to me instead. Um, so a handful of these things are that. Um, and so this is, uh, this sold for $6.99 plus priority shipping. It's 1998 little candy dispensers and you flip the face masks up to show which character is wearing the Halloween mask. And then I put them in the Halloween basket, which comped at like $2. Um, and so none of this stuff would be worth listing individually, but I put it up as a lot. Somebody paid $16.77 for it. Um, and it was free to me. So after fees and shipping, uh, I made a little bit on the shipping because I think I put it at three pounds that they paid and then I weighed it and it was like one and a half pounds plus you get the eBay discount. So I did make a little bit of money on this, uh, like probably probably seven dollars uh, after you count fees and shipping. Uh, I bought this shirt the other day for three dollars. The other day was at least six or eight weeks ago. It was at a yard sale and it's January, so it's been a while. I paid three dollars for it. And it sold for eleven fifty plus shipping, uh, and it sold. That was another one where uh, they paid two pounds, and I put it in a priority flat rate, so I ended up making some money on the shipping too. They paid twelve dollars to have it shipped. It looks like these I picked up the other day for five bucks at a thrift store, and I didn't have time to comp them then. Um, five dollars I felt like was paying up. And it kind of was, I guess. I, uh, they're mini CDs. And you see the CDRs a lot in the regular size, and I didn't know if the mini would help or hurt. Turns out they sold for about the same. Uh, they ship a little bit lighter. Uh, they sold for $18.55 free shipping, um, and they went out priority. So they probably cost me 8 bucks to ship. So I made like 5 bucks, kind of doubled my investment. Sold another Gremlin book. I am almost out of the Gremlin book um, business. I think there's only one, one more, maybe two more in my store. There's only one more on the, uh, on the quantities in the store, but I think there's maybe two out there. Uh, sold a piece of this. If you guys see this, uh, Turapur, true, tur, Turapur. I'm gonna say Turapur. Um, T-U-R-A-P-U-R, -U -U uh, pictures. And I'll put up, the. this is what sold, but I'll put up, this is what the whole picture looks like. And if, and the deal, the real deal is the filters. The filters are insane and they're, you'll recognize them because they're bright green. Um, those are a bolo for sure. I picked up some filters the other day at a thrift store for $2.50 a piece. I sold, it was like, it was three two packs but one was missing uh out of the two packs so they were two dollars and fifty cents a pack and i didn't argue that hey these are 250 for a whole pack and this is a half a pack and it's the same price because at 750 i ended up selling those for 70 dollars so i'm like 750 i i can give them 750 without whining about it being missing one but so the filters are way good but the uh pitcher showed up two days later in the same thrift store. So they were probably just sorting that big donations and didn't get to the picture at the same time as the uh, filters. And I would like to have sold them as a lot. But then I got the picture home and it was broken. I suspect it wasn't broken when I bought it. Um, but so then I just pulled the handle and sold the lid, listed the handle and the lid and this thing that holds the filter separately. And it, this is the only part that has sold. I've never tried to part these out. I've, nobody else had them parted out. So I thought somebody's going to break something and I'm going to be able to sell these parts. Uh, this hat, um, Hut Strickland. That sounds like a cartoon character. Uh, vintage McDonald's snapback for this NASCAR ra racer called Hut Strickland. Uh, sold for $12.75 plus shipping and hats I always do in a four by eight by six box with nothing but the hat in it. Um, I don't even use bubble wrap, but I buy four by eight by six boxes and uh, close those up in there and it works like a charm uh, and they always ship first class. This game, Mills, Mille Barones, Milbrone, I don't know. 
Uh, my nephew, I understand, really likes to play this game. I got this for free. Somebody was going to donate it, but brought me their donations to decide what I wanted to keep before I donated the stuff. Uh, sold for $11.90. This game's pretty... I've, I've owned this game a handful of times, and it, I mean, it's not hugely valuable. It's 10 bucks, but it sells, and maybe I should mark the next one up to 15 because it's it always sells in a day or two. It always sells quick. Um... This Snoopy watch sold for $7.99. I got it for free with this stuff somebody was going to donate. $7.99 plus shipping. Um, it doesn't work. It needs a battery. Uh, this um, Atari, kind of the same deal. Somebody brought me their Nintendo stuff and said, I was going to take this to donate, but if you can give me money for it, that would be better. And I get that. I'm super glad to do that. Um, so I ended up paying them... I want to say I paid $100 for this uh, Atari 7800 and a, like five or six uh, NES games that were uh, had boxes. Not all of them were complete in the box. One of them was just a box and no game. Anyway, um, but this sold for $90 plus shipping for the Atari 7800 with like two games, two controllers, and a power cord, but no AV cord. But I did have an AV cord so I could test it. Um, something to keep in mind about these 7800s. If you find a 7800 and you want to have a system to test games, this one will run 2600 games. So you don't have to have a 2600 to test 2600 games and a 7800 to test 7800 games. You can just run a 7800 to test the 26 and the... 78s. I don't have any 5200 games. Um, something to notice here is that 2600, 26 plus 26 is 52, and 52 plus 26 is 78. Um, and so that's just a, uh, so the Ataris are 2600, 5200 and 7800 are your the different levels of Atari. Think Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo 64. Um, and they all came out in different years and they were scaled up each time the same as the Nintendo series, only they started way lower. Like the 7800 is almost as good as an NES and they don't come anywhere near a 64. Atari never did. Some pieces of some Ninja Turtles. Uh, sold for six dollars and thirty nine cents plus. Sh no, that was free shipping. I gave that away. Holy cow! I probably paid them to take that. Uh, these are neat. These are vintage blockbuster. These were in the bottom of a barrel thing, um, and they were blockbuster tapes, anthropomorphized, and so they are. Uh, they sold for seven dollars free shipping, uh, but they were. Literally just something I found in the bottom of a box. But if you find, like, this is three all the same. If you find different characters, these can bring some money. Blockbuster stuff, people are nostalgic for. And so they will sell. These plug-and-plays, people used to throw these away by the dozens. They'd give them away, and they were junk. Now they're starting to be collectible a little bit. And so this Ms. Pac-Man sold for $17.99, free shipping. And it sold real quick. It sold overnight. That was another thing that was uh, Carol gave me because I can donate the stuff instead of her. This uh, Buffalo Bills hoodie, um, I paid $3.99. It sold for $15.99 plus shipping. S quality sports clothes are bread and butter for me. I buy quality uh, sports teams from all over the country. And what's really weird, and I'll check this one while we're here, it always seems like this is Buffalo Bills, Buffalo, New York. And it didn't sell to somebody in Buffalo. And I sell a lot of local, like, sell a lot of Cubs gear to people all over the country because we find we have a lot of Cubs gear here. I, I'm not going to figure out where that sold to. Do you guys find that, that you sell sports teams not to the area where that sports team is? Maybe those people can't find that stuff in their area, so they... But it's not like Buffalo Bills. I'm not, you know, I'm in central Illinois. <sighs> Fire King.
coffee mug. Sold for $7.99. This is a bolo, ladies and gentlemen, and I did not figure that out until after it sold. I just was running comps and I was like, oh, this, I don't see this exact same plain white Fire King coffee mug, but um, I see a lot of plain white Fire King coffee mugs, and so I'll price it $7.99. It sold instantly, instantaneous. Finish the sale, doo -doo -doo -doo. your item is listed, email notification, your item is sold, email notification, instantaneously. And then I got three people message me saying, do you have any more of these mugs for sale? And I had somebody offer me $50 to back out on that guy and sell it to him. I did not do that. Maybe I should have. No. Um, so I sold it to that guy for $7.99 plus, oh my goodness, shipping. $22.65 the buyer was all in. But uh, evidently this was crazy thick. Like probably three-eighths or a half-inch thick glass. And then it has this uh, C handle. And I didn't find one just like it. I still haven't found one just like it. And evidently it's super rare because somebody was willing to give me 50 bucks for it. Um, so keep an eye out. Fire King is always good. Uh, who knew this plain white Fire King was that good? It's probably just this particular model is uh, impossibly rare. But uh, I sold it for $8 because... I was just do, busy doing a whole bunch of listing and didn't couldn't be bothered to comp that one properly, evidently. Um, Bulls hoodie, another thing that was just a cheap piece of quality sports apparel. And uh, that one I know didn't sell around here. You guys know me. I'm always wearing Bulls stuff. But this hoodie wasn't big enough for me. Um, and I picked it up for $2.22 at Goodwill and it sold for $18.99. Uh, how about this um, glow-in-the-dark Nerf football? Uh, real tempted to keep this. And so that ball sold for $22.39. It's a Nerf ball, and it's kind of neon green, and then it has a spot to put batteries in it, and it, uh, it lights up. It's a neat ball. Um, probably should have kept it for my kids, but made $20 on it. A pair of brass... Candlesticks, I paid 99 cents a piece for these. They sold for $12.40 plus shipping. I pick up brass stuff when it is marked well and generally only when it's made in the U.S. If it's marked India, most of the brass in the world is marked India and it's probably cheap stuff. Or at least stuff that you can't say what brand it is. This hat, I picked this up for a dollar. It has a marijuana leaf on it. It is old. It's they're not made in the USA. It's made in Korea. This one somebody bought because it had a marijuana leaf on the front of it. And it sold for $19.99. And this one sold for $19.99 plus shipping. And I got a message immediately saying, hey, if you back out on that guy, I'll give you $30 for it. And I thought, this guy already gave me $26. So maybe I left a little bit of money on the table, but it's not that much. It's certainly not worth backing out on a guy for Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like. If you know me personally, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up. I can't tell you how important it is to the view count for this channel. It is unbelievable how much difference it makes. So I'm, if I text you last week and said, hey, go comment on the video, um, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up because it's unbelievable when you get thumbs up how much difference it makes on like five or six would double my thumbs up will double my view count so hit the thumbs up for me thumbs up comment subscribe uh if you're not already subscribed come back and watch another video later and check out my brother's channel two flipping puppets if you haven't already it's fantastic it's super fun uh i think he's going to release once a week so probably he has one coming up here in the next day or two so right now there's only two, maybe there's three by the time you see this and get over there. Um, thanks for watching.